Okay, over the over the course of the last couple of weeks, uh, we've 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 covered a lot of territory and wandered around a whole lot of things. One of them, though, has had to do with uh, the Gulf of Tonkin. We've talked, you know, uh, the LBJ tapes are out now. The LBJ Library has released a whole bunch of tapes, uh, just in the last four or five years, six years, including as I've played to you for you on many many times in this program, the tapes of. Uh, LBJ talking with Everett Dirksen and uh, with McNamara and with George Bundy and with others. Actually, I'm not sure it was McNamara, but in any case, with a bunch of his people. And, and uh, Dirksen actually was the Senate Republican leader, you know, the, the, the opposition, about the fact that Richard Nixon was committing treason in August and September of 1968 by encouraging the South Vietnamese to not take the deal that LBJ had already worked out with them to end the Vietnam War in 1968. And then Nixon said, we'll give you a better deal if you just don't take this deal so that I can get elected. So Nixon stole the election by interfering in the actions of a foreign government while we were at war. I mean, that's treason. Uh, you could argue if it's true what was being reported in The Atlantic yesterday that John McCain and Lindsey Graham did something similar by going to Prince Bandar and saying, you know, uh, our, the foreign policy of the United States, which is established... Uh, broadly by Congress and in, but but negotiated and executed by the president is not to our liking, and we are not giving enough money and enough weapons to these Sunni uh, killers in Syria. And so, would you please raise a bunch of money from a bunch of Saudi billionaires to give to them? And Prince Bandar uh, did so, according to the the article in the Atlantic. And uh, now many of those people who we armed and we paid for at John requests, not we, the Saudis did, at the request of John McCain, are uh, in Iraq uh, in the process of taking down the Maliki government that we put in place. They are uh, known now as ISIS. So, you know, is John McCain guilty of treason? I, that's a little more arguable, but um, it's certainly problematic shall we say. I mean, the Constitution does not envision uh, individual senators running U.S. foreign policy. It's very clear that U.S. foreign policy is run by the Article II part of the government, the executive branch. So McCain is doing something. I mean, you know, he didn't, he, he didn't win the presidency, but he's acting like he did. And there's something wrong with this. But back to LBJ in the Gulf of Tonkin. Here's where I think this is really, really interesting. And, and and where I think history is repeating itself in really scary ways. We constantly see these guys on the right doing their fear-mongering crap. And then people in power, whether they be on the left or the, the right, in quotes, you know, institutional people in power, having to react to them. And so, for example, I would submit to you that if it wasn't for Fox News and John McCain, that Obama would not have just sent over 300 soldiers into Iraq. That he just would have said, you know, we're done. But they were calling him a wuss. I mean, Dick Cheney is running around going, this guy's got, you know, he's the worst president ever, no foreign policy, blah de blah de blah feckless, quack, quack, quack. And so what, what does... What does Obama do? He says, okay, we'll do the same thing LBJ did at the start of the Vietnam War. We'll send in a couple hundred advisors, some, some Green Berets. We've seen this movie before. It doesn't turn out well. I mean, you could argue that when Joe McCarthy started screaming about communists in the State Department, that that led to the radicalization of the Cold War and, and led to, to us spending in today's dollars, trillions of dollars on uh, coming up with, you know, 10, 12, 15,000 nuclear weapons enough to wipe out the earth four times and then the Soviet Union feeling they had to, con you know, I mean, there's a, a lot of harms that we can identify over the recent past that have been the consequence of fear mongering. So I wanted to play, I was listening to these clips last night, I was up until two o'clock in the morning and I, Shane had found a page over at the LBJ library with a bunch of LBJ clips in it, his telephone conversations, mostly with uh, McNamara, who was his secretary of defense. 
And uh, McNamara, and because what we were trying to figure out is, did LBJ know that the Gulf of Tonkin thing was a sham or not? And uh, from everything I've heard, uh, the jury is still out for me. It sounds to me like McNamara knew it. And McNamara was pushing really, really hard to have a war. And McNamara had just, you know, a real crisis of conscience toward the end of his life and basically apologized for Vietnam. But here is LBJ talking to McNamara on the phone, pointing out that the reason they have to intervene in Vietnam is because Barry Goldwater, the number two Republican in the United States Senate, the guy that had run for president against LBJ in 64, and LBJ beat him, that Barry Goldwater was giving them hell, calling them weak on communism. And so we've got to stand up to these guys. Here's the clip. I want to leave an impression on the background and the people we talk to over here that we're going to be firm as hell without saying something that's dangerous. Now, what do you think? Uh, uh, the people are calling me up. Uh, I just talked to now, New just York Just pause banker. that for, just for, for just a second. He, said, he says, I want, to be, I, want, I want to say that we're going to be firm as hell without saying something that's dangerous. In my opinion, this is LBJ saying to McNamara, we want to talk tough. But we don't want to explicitly say something that's going to start a war. It, I, I, I listened to a whole bunch of these clips, and every time McNamara would come to him and ask for an escalation, LBJ would say, give me the reason why we shouldn't. What are, what are the people who disagree with you saying? And I think one of the problems is that LBJ wasn't asking those people. He was just asking McNamara. But it seemed to me pretty clear that LBJ was not enthusiastic about this. But anyhow, with that in mind, listen to the clip again. Now, what do you think? Uh, uh, the people are calling me up. Uh, I just oh, talked to the New York Bank. I want to leave an impression on the background and the people we talk to over here that we're going to be firm as hell without saying something that's dangerous. Now, what do you think? Uh, uh, the people are calling me up. Uh, I just talked to a New York banker. I just talked to a fellow in Texas. They all feel that the Navy responded wonderfully, and that's good. But they want to be damn sure I don't pull them out and run, and they want to be damn sure that we're firm. That's what all the country wants, because Goldwater's raising so much hell about how he's going to blow them off the moon. And they say that we oughtn't to do anything that the national interest doesn't require, but we sure ought to always leave the impression that if you shoot at us, you're going to get hit. So there you go. I mean, you know, Barry Goldwater was saying that LBJ wanted to cut and run when we had a few hundred advisors in Vietnam. And, you know, my question is, how long is it going to be before we hear cut and run coming out of Dick Cheney's mouth? I mean, that literally was what Goldwater was saying, which drove LBJ to go along with McNamara and escalate the Vietnam War at that moment, just before the Gulf of, Gulf of Tonkin You're Resolution. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. I mean, this is evil. This is just plain old flat out evil. Russell Brand has some thoughts on this, too. We'll get to those as we go through the program today. We'll be back.